it is Helen D. I thought we would do a little let's chat video today to talk about uh, Mill Hill kits and how I get them ready to stitch. I've been doing a lot of the smaller ornaments. Um, I, I fell in love with them since I found these frames, which I would talk about because that makes it so much easier for me to hold. So I've had a lot of people say, you know, they're adorable. They just don't really know how to get them started or get them finished. So today's video will be more talking about how I get it kitted up and ready to go. And then I will do a separate video talking about how I've been finishing them um, with the scrapbook cardstock on the back and the cording. So this is one of them. It's called Ollie Elf. I love him because of his dangly little legs. <laughs> so Mill Hill typically comes in the larger kits which are called their buttons and beads. Um, a lot of these are, they finish to be about, this is five and a half, five and a quarter by five and a quarter, and then they sell a six inch frame. This one I already have kind of ready to go. And then the other one, the ones that we've been, I've been doing, are these smaller ones, which are their ornaments. And they come in this little package. And then I also wanted to show you the Satsuma Street her kits are very similar. This one is one that I'm, I actually finished, but it comes with everything. <laughs> everything you need except whatever you want to put on the back. So the Mill Hill Small Kits, this is the one we're going to do today, comes in this tiny package. Everything you need is in there. So let's pull it out so that it's not so reflecty. There. So you've got your picture. You've got the perfect size cut. Whoa, we've got a falling light. Hold on just a second. There, you've got your perfect size cut of perforated paper in whatever color. This one happens to be a black. Um, some of them are white, some of them are the antique brown. They come in a whole bunch of colors. A very thorough instruction packet. All of your floss in one big wad. <laughs> And then usually your beads and things will be in two different packages. And the reason they do this is there's so many colors that this way they can mark on there. You know, the small ones happen to be in one bag and the larger ones, it just helps you when the time comes to actually put them on. So I'm gonna set everything aside except the instructions and the water floss. And I'm just gonna open this up so that I don't show you the chart. Their instructions are very good. So you'll have a big list with your floss colors and your bead colors. And like I said, here it has some little asterisks to show you that these two color beads are in one pack and these three with the asterisks are in another pack. There's also a charm that's tucked in there. They have a great diagram to show you how to attach your beads if you've never done that before. Um, I have done one of these Let's Talks about attaching beads. It's really just putting a bead on as you're stitching. Um, so that's not anything to be nervous about if you haven't done it before. And then on the back, they have really, 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 really good directions on how to get started. You know, they say to do all your stitching first, then any back stitch that you have, then do your beads, then, you know, the charm, then you can cut it out and all that. So what I have found to be the easiest <laughs> For this is I went through this one I opened it up and I counted up how many flosses were on there actually I counted wrong because they had black listed as a back stitch and it was up here and I didn't see it so I counted 12 but there were actually only 11 so I grabbed a piece of in my case I used um, a scrap of file folder that I have kicking around but anything a little thicker a cereal box cardstock whatever you've got I punched 12 holes in I only needed 11. I also tried to get this, like before I punched anything, I cut my paper so it would be the same size so that when I have everything on there, because I'm not starting this right away, I can slip it right in the bag and everything's all together. So I went through, punched my holes, and I wrote in my floss number, and then I also put the symbol. Because what I found for these, the chart like the charts up here. So I'm going to make a photocopy, a working copy, and then I'm going to cut that out 
so that I only have this little tiny thing I have to deal with. And then I don't need to look at this. I can just look at this. <laughs> and it has my DMC number and the symbol. And I wrote the name on it so that if I lose it, I'll know where it goes. Um, so the way that they do their flosses, they're just kind of all wadded up. And it's kind of like one of those old, like the dimensions kits and from back in the day where you had all the flosses and you have to separate them yourself. It will say on here, um, typically, if there's more than one length of floss, this one doesn't. So my guess is there's one length of each. So what I try to do is the ones that I can easily figure out, like this one is white. I'll pull it out and put it on. These are long. I'd say they come about a yard long, which for me is too long because you use three strands of floss on the 14 count perforated paper. And if I were to use this whole yard of floss, they would be a tangled mess in moments. So I take it, I put the two ends together and I'm just gonna cut it in half. And that way I have two half yard pieces. And then I'll just loop them on here from a white. So I go through and I pull out all the ones that are easy to find. Well, there are multiple blacks, even though it doesn't say that. Here's three blacks, four blacks. I pull them out. Here's a blue. There's only one of that. So that's got to be turquoise. If there are some on there that I'm not quite sure, <laughs> you know, if there's multiple light blue, very light blue, ultra light blue, medium blue, because they give you the DMC number, you can go to your DMC color card if you have one. And match that up, right? I could say, all right, I can't figure out the difference between 740 and 741. And I could find them on here and match them up. If you don't have one of these, you could get all the colors that are easy <laughs> out of the way first. Then go into your regular floss bin and say you can't figure out, you know, three different colors. Pull those three DMCs and just compare them right to the skein of floss that you have. And that's another easy way to kind of figure out what you have <laughs> to get them on here. Because sometimes it can be tricky if you have a lot of them that are various shades of the same thing. That's just an easy way. Now I'm not gonna do all of these. I'm gonna stop here. But that's what I would do with all of them. Just get them all on here so that way everything's on my little card and I'm ready to go. Then the really only other thing you need to do is figure out where to start on your paper. Um, the colored papers, I think they're actually like a painted. They're the color on one side and white on the other. So it's very easy to figure out the front from the back. The white and the brown, sometimes it's harder to figure out. You have to kind of just feel it and it usually feels a little smoother on the front and a little rougher on the back. But in all honesty, this is full coverage. Is anyone gonna know? <laughs> no one's gonna know but you. I know I have some that I picked the wrong side. They're fine. <clears throat> so for this one, it's easy. I'm gonna flip it over so I'm on the back and then I'm just going to measure side to side and put a little X and I use whatever I happen to have laying around. So I'm gonna line this up so that it hits both corners going one way and just take a pencil and, and you know, part way through on the back, put a line, turn it and do the same thing. And then where they meet, Is your center and usually I'll go in and just kind of put a more specific mark there so I know you're gonna stitch right over this no one will know if you put your first stitch in and then you wanted to erase what else you had that's fine look there's some mess up on the back too no one's gonna know because they're only gonna see this side so now I will be ready to go to start I do want to pay attention to my stitch count this one is 2.75 wide and 2.5 high, so I need to stitch it horizontal, not vertical. 
Um, so the beads I just tuck aside. Now typically they give you a needle. Oh, it's in there. There's two needles in there. There's a stitching needle and a beading needle. So those will be all good to go. It gives you directions for um, what floss to use, where to stitch the beads on. I ignore all that. <laughs> this is what I use is the, um, I don't know if it's Beadalon or Bedallion. It's Nymo thread size B and it comes in different colors, but I, this is a clear, it says white, but it's really kind of clear and this is black. So like for this one, because it's black beads on black paper, I'd probably use the black. I'll use that for all of them. <laughs> I don't bother messing around with stitch this one on in green and then stitch this one on. Nope, they're all gonna get the same because that way it's easy and I'll show you the back of one of these birds. Right, I can carry a little, this is gonna get covered up. So I don't worry about that. I could tuck it underneath if I wanted to, if I was carrying a long way. I'll use the same one all the way over. I just make sure I don't cross any of this empty area because then when you cut it out, you would cut your thread. So I keep everything on the inside. <clears throat> one other tip I have for stitching on perforated paper that you're going to cut, because this is three strands, you can't do a loop start. So whenever I do a start or a finish, now here's one I didn't, but I try <laughs> to do them so that my threads are on the inside, right? Like if I'm going to start this row, it's kind of easy down here because you would be starting left to right and then your tail would be on the inside. I don't want my tails on the outside because then when I go to cut it, sometimes you've got to trim them up like this one I'll have to trim up so it doesn't stick out over. But see, I try and end them so that all my fuzzy bits go in not out, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, so this one, like I said, uh, once I have the floss on here, I'll just curl everything back up and put it in my bag. That's what I did with this one. This one I haven't decided. I might stitch it on fabric instead of paper, um, though it is pretty full coverage, so I haven't decided. This one, it looks like I didn't even put the DMC numbers on. I just put the symbols. I could go back and add them. And then this one's beads are in there. Like everything's in there. So I'm ready to go. The last thing I wanted to talk about again was this little frame. If you go on eBay and you search magnetic Mill Hill frame, there's a bunch of different sellers. They come in a bunch of different sizes. This particular size for the ornaments, they, they go by the inside dimension. And because a lot of these are made in the Ukraine, they go by centimeters. So this one is six and a half centimeters by nine centimeters. In inches, I believe that's 2.6 by 3.5. So that's the dimensions you want for this size. So these, I'm just gonna move my magnet in so it's out of the way. These are magnetic. Cause everything's now gonna stick. <laughs> so they have inlaid magnets on both sides and then when you put them together it just gives you enough thickness that it doesn't hurt your hand as much and it keeps your threads from snagging anyone who's worked with perforated paper can tell you it's really annoying when they snag so you would just wouldn't have all this to deal with because you'd have a new piece lay it in there and then take your top one it's really magnetic, so watch your fingers and kind of set it on there and pop it on. And then that's going to stay right in place where you need it. I may have gotten mine so it's a little not, you know, if I need to stitch more up here, I'll need to move it. Um, everything's in there. There is kind of a deeper side and a more shallow side. I've been stitching with the pretty side up, but I would think that's kind of like using a Q-snap where some people like to stitch in, they call it in the well, right? You could do, you could do either way. It wouldn't make any difference. <laughs> um, 
I've really, really enjoyed these. It's just made it so much easier to hold. I'll do all my stitching on here, and then I will take it off of here before I do my beading. And the reason that I do that is because of some of the beads, and this one, this is a Satsuma, and it only has a handful of beads. The Mill Hills have a lot more beads. And on the petite beads, they tell you to go through it twice. So it's basically you like you're doing a cross stitch, you put your bead on, then you come up to cross your stitch, go through the bead, and go back down. For me, I have to kind of bend this a little bit in order to get it through and then back down. And it's not bending on here, <laughs> which is the point. So I'll do all of my stitching on here, and then I take it off and I do all of the beading with my Nymo thread and then I'm ready to finish. So like I said, I will do a separate video talking about how I've been doing the backing and some of the different options. Um, but I just wanted to kind of walk you through how I set one up. Sometimes if I don't have a lot of time to stitch or my eyes aren't feeling great that night, I might go through and get one, get one ready. This one I know, this one I did when my finger was broken and I wasn't stitching as much, but I could separate thread, so that's what I did. Um, if there's something that you're interested in trying, I hope you enjoy them, and uh, I'll be back with another video on finishing.